concentrate on pick up your duty area of work what attracts your attention what's the most important thing are you turning men's hearts unto the lord and think about it if you ever grumble or ever complain in this church what do you grumble about are you grumbling because there's too much emphasis on holiness too much emphasis on sanctification it's a selling of between you and I. Do you think, do you think Christ will complain that we have too much emphasis on holiness? Do you think like that? Do you think that Christ will say there's too much emphasis on sanctification? Do you ever think like that? Will Christ complain about that? If what you complain about in the church will spend too much time in preaching, if that's your complaint, is that not superficial? Do you think Christ is going to judge me and blame me and condemn me for spending one and a half hours in preaching? Do you think Christ is going to condemn me, is going to judge me for quoting too many scriptures when I preach? What do you complain about what Christ will not complain about? Why don't you have the mind of Christ? Christ would love this, that this man talks about repentance. He talks about sanctification. Christ will appreciate this, that this man is turning the hearts of the people, he's turning them to the Lord, he's preparing them for the rapture. Why are you not happy with what Christ is happy with? If you ever give me any trouble, on what do you give me trouble? Are they not on superficial things, on things that do not count? Do you think that Christ might solve those things? And why don't you bring your mind, your heart, your life to the Word of God and have the mind of Christ so that all the, all the abnormal concentration or superficial dogmas we, we kind of throw them away, throw them overboard and then concentrate on what Christ will have us concentrate on. What okay, if I make a program and from the time of the faith clinic to the morning message to the Bible teaching to the Bible study and to the evening message and to the revival time in the night? What if I make all the topics, holiness topics? Will Christ look at the program and then judge me and condemn me and say, These holiness topics are too many? Will he condemn me for preaching holiness and in the morning at 6 30 at 7 o'clock? No, he will not. He wants us to talk about readiness for heaven. If that is the case, it means then whatever complaints you have about the topics, whatever complaints you have about the time that was spent on emphasizing those messages that will take people to heaven. Those are superficial complaints. And you, you don't have anything to fight about. The people of that slide, you don't fight them. I mean, fight them with prayer, fight them with rebuke, fight them in action, fight them in everywhere to drive them to the Lord. It's me you fight. You don't fight the people that pollute the pure water of the gospel. And then you tell them you cannot do this. We're going to preserve this pure water of the gospel for the coming generation. You don't fight them. It's me that preserving the water of life that you want to fight. Where are you coming from? Why don't you understand we should not have all this abnormal concentration on superficial dogmas and then bring your mind, your heart, your soul and everything you've got all your talent and bring it join hands together with me the essential thing, the peace and the holiness that makes people to get to heaven will join hands together I say to say, I preach it to preach it I emphasize it to emphasize it and then together when they hear it from me and they hear it from you and they hear it from her and they hear it from him and they hear it everywhere sectional meeting of the ushers they hear it sectional meeting of the choir sectional meeting of the, of the psychology they hear the same thing 
name and then the people touch me they will they will get the sword of the spirit from you he that escapes the sword of elijah elisha will catch him he that escapes out of elisha then we know that jehu will catch him he that escapes jehu we know that hazael will catch him if we all say the same thing they come to me as i tell them the same thing they come to you you tell them the same thing and we all tell them the same thing they will not escape Oh, well, catch them for the kingdom. Catch them for the kingdom. That means then, with all your heart, you say, on this central truth, on this central truth, we want to commit ourselves. And all the superficial things we're complaining about, we leave them aside. Abnormal concentration on superficial dogmas. The time has now come. That the things that really matter, those are the things we're going to concentrate on the things that don't profit people. The things that are not essential to leading people into the kingdom. We abandon those things. Jeremiah chapter 16 verse 19. Jeremiah chapter 16 verse 19. O Lord, my strength and my fortress, my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come. Unto me from the ends of the earth. And then he goes on and says, Shall we say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, things wherein there is no profit. You know, if all the prophets of God will concentrate on the right thing, Jeremiah and Elijah, and Isaiah and Ezekiel and Daniel and, and Elisha. And everybody, if we all say the same thing, as doesn't it surprise you? You look at the Bible, and look at all the writers in the Bible. All these writers, they span 1800 years thereabout. But they did not know one another. When you read Isaiah, it doesn't, it doesn't contradict Jeremiah. When you read Jeremiah, it doesn't contradict Ezekiel. When you read Ezekiel, it doesn't contradict Daniel. When you read Daniel, it doesn't contradict Paul. When you read Paul, it doesn't contradict Peter. All these people, different ages and different times, all unite saying the same thing. That's why they are turning the minds of the world unto the Lord. And those of us who are here were not separated by 200 years, we're just separated by a few years, and then we're drinking from the same fountain. We can say the same thing. We can preach the same thing. We can emphasize the same thing. What I say at the combined service, you say it in the district. You say it in the group. You say it when you're having your ushers meeting Sunday afternoon. You say it when you're having your security meeting Sunday afternoon. And when you say it when you're having your choir practice, you say the same thing. When you're having your women and meeting, you say the same thing in the light press. You say the same thing in the light test. You say the same thing with technology. We all unite together. We're saying the same thing. And we're not, you know, we're not saying different things. The same voice. The same voice. And we're precisely the same thing. I'm telling you that this nation will shake. It's continent will shake. It's when we come together in the power of the Spirit of God and we leave, we leave, we abandon the superficial dogmas that do not profit and we concentrate on the same thing. A revival has come already. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 52. Isaiah chapter 52. I'm reading to you from verse 8. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 8. The watchmen shall lift up the voice. For the voice together shall they sing. They shall see eye to eye. They shall see eye to eye. I claim that promise for this church. We shall see eye to eye. We will not oppose one another. We will not contradict one another. We will not fight one another. We will be united. We will see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. When that unity comes on some doctrine, on the word of God. And there is abso apostolic caution. And everybody is taking heed. There is absolute commitment. Everybody is committed. Abnormal concentration. We realize that now. We throw that away. We say meets and things that do not profit. We're not involved in them anymore. They will stand together in the word of God. And I'm saying revival will come through this church. 
God to rise up and let's stand together, eye to eye, mind to mind, heart to heart, concentrating on the word of God with an established heart. Your heart established on the word of God. Your heart established on this eternal truth. Your heart established on this word of God that you say, yes, we're standing, standing together, living together, preaching together, praying together, and living on this word of God together. No contradiction and no opposition. I was standing on this world, a world will change. Raise your voice to the Lord and say, Lord, we well, thank you. Do not be carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. Each that warning, that caution, let's see eye to eye, let's believe the same thing, the same word of God, let's stand on it with a firm conviction, a heart that is suddenly planted. On this eternal, unchanging word of the Almighty. The apostolic caution against false doctrine. If anybody comes to you, no matter how dear, how precious a fellow may be, and he does not bring this doctrine, receive him not. Don't love anybody more than Christ. Don't exalt somebody's opinion more than that of Christ. Take heed. Take heed. There's anything that is contradictory in your heart, take it to the cross, take it to Calvary, and the place for all those contradictory notions. Don't complain about anything Christ will not complain about. Don't be like the more mixed multitude in the wilderness. The major problem is that their heart was not in agreement with Moses. Many miracles came. They still complained. Water out of the rock, they still complain. Manna from heaven, they still complain. What are they complaining about? Superficial things. Things that do not profit. The Pharisees complain about the ministry of Christ. What are they complaining about? Healing somebody on the Sabbath day. Superficial dogma. Picking ears of corn to eat on the Sabbath day. Superficial dogma. Their hearts were not one with Christ. What did Judas complain about? This oil should have been sold, commerce, and given to the poor. Superficial dogma, Ab abnormal concentration on superficial things. But where their heart ought to be, where the concentration ought to be, that they let aside.
Let there be absolute commitment to sound doctrine with an established heart, established disposition on this unchanging word of God, established. Let the same might be you. Commit yourself. Never forget that Hebrews chapter 13 verse 9. Stand on it, lay by it. Commit your mind, your heart, your life to it. Let your whole personality be centered and centralized, fixed and focused on that word of the Almighty God. Don't allow yourself to be bothered anymore by superficial things. Hold on to the essential thing. Whatever pressure, persecution, problem may arise, stand on that word. In the world you shall have persecution, tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And he that will live godly in this present age, in this world, will suffer persecution, but continue thou in those things that you have learned, knowing of whom you have learned them. Don't allow the winds that blow, the storms that arise, the waves of the ocean, and the changing times of this day, of the epoch, of the era. Don't allow that to change you. Let there be absolute commitment to sound doctrine. Whatever others do, make up your mind with a purpose of heart. My heart is fixed to God, my heart is fixed. And the righteous will not be swayed, will not be tossed to and fro. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. And if there are people that teach contrary to what we have learned, avoid them. If there are people that act, that behave contrary, so what we learn, avoid them. Don't befriend them. Don't recommend them. To us, to choose them and put them in important places. Avoid them. Avoid them. Don't have favorites, I don't. I love the people that love the Lord. To find a man, I find a woman of the same heart, the same conviction. I give them the right hand of fellowship. Let's stand together. Let's defend the gospel together. Let's emphasize the same holiness of hearts together. 
all of them lifting up, don't pull down. Let our ministries complement one another. Don't let our ministries contradict one another. You're making an announcement, be in agreement with your pastor. You're taking any part in the service, be in agreement with your pastor. Heart to heart, hand to hand, sign shoulder to shoulder. We we'll do the work of the Lord, and then the work will prosper in our hands. Stand faithful, stand true.